This is a meeting of the Fall River Commission on Disability for Wednesday, October 19th, 2024. Um, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this, of this meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by this uh, by this present by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Do I need to read that all over again, guys, or is that going to be no? A web file. Okay. Uh, roll call. Chairman Dennis Paulselli. Present. Vice Chairwoman Debbie Pacheco. Present. Commissioner Dan Robillard. Present. Okay. Um, next is public input. Is Mr. there any Chairman. public? Yep, Mr. go ahead. Chairman. Let the record reflect that we have two commissioners absent since the roll call was not completed. Uh, Commissioner Ann O'Neill Souza and Commissioner uh, Lisa Silver are absent. Okay, duly noted. Um, I will ask uh, two times for public input. Uh, is there any public input? Oh, is there any public input? Okay. The next item is the approval for the minutes of the meeting for the meeting conference call meeting of September 11th, 2024. Motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting. Debbie Pacheco, second. Okay. Are there any discussion? Okay, roll call. Chairman Dennis Paul Sally? Yes. Vice Chairwoman W. Pacheco? Yes. Commissioner Dan Robillard? Yes. Okay, um, next item. Um, I'm announcing that I am reappointing Dan Robillard as our treasurer. He works very, very well with um, uh, the staff at Health and Human Services regarding our accounts. Um, our scholarship events and just the overall communications, it's really been much, much, much easier the past couple of years since we've had Dan as our treasurer. It's much, much smoother. Um, so I, I don't think this needs to be voted on. Um, so I'm just, I'm just um, announcing that. Um, and congratulations, Dan, if you accept. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to continuing uh, my working relationship with Rochelle and uh, Sandy in the uh, in the Health and Human Services Office, as well as U.S. Chair and uh, any of our other colleagues that have questions regarding our finances. The next item is worker group updates. Uh, the only ADA I update I have was a question raised by Commissioner Rob Robillard at the last meeting about transition plans and how often are they, you know, should they be done and so on. And, and I reached out to Jeff Dugan, um, and he told me that there is no real, there is no real clear. Um, uh, law as to when transition plans should be done, but he did say that the Massachusetts Office on Disability, MOD, recommends that they be um, updated every two years. And what he means by that is not, not doing the whole document, but just going through the plan to decide what's, to figure out what's been done and whatever's been done can be deleted from the transition plan, and if there are any new projects, they should be added to the plan, and if there are any changes in the services, the delivery of programs, and any changes in policies, that should also be noted 
in a, in a transition plan. Otherwise, the whole thing doesn't have to be done over again. It just has to be updated because the transition plan is meant to be a living document. Are there any questions about that? Mr. Chairman? Yep. Very briefly, I wonder if uh, I know there's been some changes in the the um, staffing at City Hall regarding some of the uh, people that we work with uh, uh, regarding the transition plan, but I wonder if uh, within the next, say, 60 to 90 days, uh, we could uh, figure out uh, who best to discuss the transition plan with and uh, see see where we uh, where we've uh, completed some of the stuff in some areas that uh, we might want to focus on going forward uh, as a means of maybe um, uh, not only updating and, and revising the transition plan, but also as a means in a sort of a, uh, <clears throat> sort of a uh, living working document for the work group uh, to see how best uh, uh, we can make improvements that are not yet done in the transition plan and maybe uh, set some of those to be uh, uh, focused on for grants from the, uh, from the Mass Office on Disability going forward. Well, what I'd like to I'd like to make a suggestion, if it's okay with the rest of the commission. What I'd like to do is offline use our ADA work group in a conference call, and maybe we can do it. Um, you know, pending on schedule and everything like that, we can have a conference call chat with our ADA coordinator to see what's the best way to go about undertaking something like that. Who we can work with as department heads and stuff like that. How does that sound? For the, how does that sound to everybody? That's perfect. That's exactly what uh, I was a little long-winded in saying, but that's exactly what I, my intent of my statement was to have happen, because uh, we may be able to get some ADA improvement grants for some of the areas uh, that are not done. I recall, and I'm not sure if I was on the commission exactly at the time that the transition plan was undertaken because I've been on and off several times over the years. Um, uh, <clears throat> but I think I recall the Center for Human Design uh, indicating that they believe some sort of a update, some sort of a review, again, not the whole plan, but just to see where we are, uh, should take place every five years. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Uh, I will uh, yield and go forth with uh, Jeff Dugan's able suggestion uh, of two years. Uh, that may be a little that may be a little uh, short, but uh, Jeff is certainly an expert, and uh, I, I would uh, I, I would want his expertise in this matter as well as. Uh, many others over the years so yeah it's kind of like um uh it's kind of like i remember he he said it doesn't have to be redone from you know it, it's it's just it's kind of like the charter you go through it not to make a <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> you, know, you, that's, go, you know you know that's a great analogy that really it, it really is i you you hit a bullseye man um, so if it's okay, I can I can uh, I'll be in touch with um, attor I'll be in touch with Attorney Hoyak offline, um, and we can set up something with with the ADA work group um, as a conference call meeting, um, and we can do that, you know, um, and we can work it out according to at his schedule and things like that. Is there any are there any more uh, questions or concerns on that topic? None, none at this time. Okay. The next item is policies. I'm going to turn the, uh, the floor over to our Vice Chair, Deputy Pacheco, to, um, to lead us in um, 
the policy that we have that we have come up with that we're putting before the commission for approval. Okay. Is everyone able to hear me okay? Yep. I just wanted to make sure I had unmuted myself. Um, so do you want me to read the policy so it's um, on record on what we're proposing? Would that be okay with everybody just so that it's on the record? Uh, absolutely. Mr. Chairman, I think it should be on the record if it's before us for approval. Okay, go for it, Tim. All right, great. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I think in working with uh, Mr. Vaselli, we felt that it was a good time and opportunity to kind of put together some sort of policy and timeline regarding our um, scholarship program. So the Forever Commission on Disability Comprehensive Policy and Timeline Governing Our Scholarship Program. The Forever Commission on Disability conducts an annual scholarship program for residents of Fall River with disabilities who will be attending colleges, universities, community colleges, or trade schools upon graduation from Fall River's public and private high schools. Here is the timeline that was established and is being recommended at this time. First step, the Commission will reach out to guidance counselors in October to begin their process for determination of recipients from their schools. Second timeline, the qualifications of this scholarship is the student must have a documented disability, resident of the city of Fall River, and accepted to a college, university, community college, or trade school. Three, list of recipients must be submitted to the chairperson by April 1st, no extensions. Number four, information required by the guidance counselors of recipients include name, address, date of birth, phone numbers, including landline and cell numbers, email addresses, and we're prefacing that we'd prefer not their high school email address, but their home email address so that we can be in touch with the recipients after, after their high school graduation and name of institutions they were accepted. Five, the commission will host an event awarding the scholarships in the month of May. Yep. Six, right. the chair and vice chair will be working on invitations to be sent to appropriate city dignitaries beginning around mid-February and will send formal invitations to the recipients and their guests immediately after April 1st. Seven, each recipient must provide to the commission the appropriate office for the scholarship to be mailed, such as Bureau Office, Student Account Office, or Financial Aid Office, as well as the address of the institution they will be attending. No scholarship will be given to the individual recipients. The scholarships will go directly to the institution. Eight, the information from the recipient regarding the appropriate office to disperse the funds will be, there's a word there missing, will be provided to the head clerk of Health and Human Services who is the account manager as soon as possible after the event. The last piece is scholarship funds will be dispersed to each institution by June 15th. And that is the recommendation of the current policy and timeline governing our scholarship program. Do we have any questions or? Let's, let's put a motion on the floor first. Thank you. Mo motion to adopt the uh, proposed policy for the Four of the Disability Commission regarding its uh, annual scholarship program and award. Okay. All right, and I'll second now, that. And now we can go into... Now we can go into discussion, yep. Okay. So, um, so, I mean, of course, Dennis, you and I worked on this. So, Dan, do you have any questions in regard to... I, I, I don't. Uh, it, I don't. I've, I've received it, uh, and uh, I'm in full support of it as it is. Okay. All right. So just for the record, um, and I don't think we need to make any changes or anything like that, but just for the record, the, 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 the rule about being a resident of Fall River with a documented disability, that is our rule. The school themselves make the determination as to who will qualify to be a scholarship recipient. We don't get into any of the, you know, we don't get into that process. So, but I, like I said, I don't think that needs to be noted, but it's just, just for the record, that's, um, you know, that, that's how we've been doing the program. All right. Are there any more questions? Are All right. we ready to? Are we ready to vote? I think so, yes. Okay, roll call vote. Tim and Dennis Pauzelli? 
Yes. Vice Chairwoman Debbie Pachigo? Yes. Commissioner Dan Robillard? Yes. Um, that, oh, yeah. Okay. Go Dennis, ahead. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the agenda. Was there any so when you have policy, you know, work group updates, there was nothing it wasn't specific to this, right? It was just any policy? Yes. Okay. Any, any policy and I just happened to put the proposed scholarship okay. under um, policy so, work group because I thought that made sense to me, but you know it, it did. <laughs> I I think my other piece is since we're still on that same line, you know, on the agenda. Mm-hmm. Is um, is that we are working on also um, like buttoning up and, and coming up with something also for the handicap enforcement program. We're trying right. to gather information just so that the rest of the commissioners are aware of that. And Dan, the only other thing that since you're the other commissioner that's here today is um, in talking with mm-hmm. Dennis and you know just trying to really look at is there any other policies and procedures that we need to take a look at as a commission that we need to uh, not, not, not not at this time and uh, I, I very very briefly um I, I i i feel right now that our finances are in very good shape okay uh, and uh uh, I'll just speak for myself. I don't know how the rest of the commission feels, and we're not certainly not taking any action. Uh, there's nothing before us right now. Correct. But I, uh, I'm not in a real hurry to enter into an, another agreement with, no, no. With, any, with, with, with any city agency or department at this time. If, if there's something that comes forth that makes sense, certainly we can entertain it as a body, but I... Uh, I, I feel we're in pretty good shape right now, and I, I, I'd like to just, um, for myself as one member, I hope we can take a, a cooling off period of approximately uh, six months to a year and then review it uh, and see where we are. Yep, I we appreciate that um, that feedback. I think all I think with keeping that in mind. Um, Mr. Robillard, I think it's just really putting something together so that way we're prepared for that next step, I think, so we're not um, scrambling. I think it's really coming up with something that makes sense and that we can um, put together. So I totally agree. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think, um, you know, from our meeting with the mayor on May 20th and all, I think I, I, whatever we come up with, it needs to be something that the commission is more active um, and more hands-on than it was in the past. And I think that, so I think that's what um, that's what the policy work group is trying to come up with, um, where we've been researching some things and we've been looking over some practices, um, some of which we didn't know about. So this, this has been a very interesting. It's been a very interesting, you know year looking back over things so you know before we enter into something we we just want to make sure that you know we have something that's in writing and something that we are willing to you know we are willing to be more hands-on than we were i think in the past i think that's all i want to say mr chairman very briefly yep uh the uh the police department is in a major transition right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we have an interim chief, and uh, uh, I believe that status is going to remain for at least six months, if the news reports are correct. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I, look, it's no secret I, I oppose a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, agreements going forward uh, in the past uh, uh, regarding the amount of money we paid. I felt it was too high. That it's no reflection on the Fall River Police Department or its offices. Uh, the officers did a good job uh, with what we charged them to do. I, I felt the amount of money we paid uh, was too high. I never felt we got enough uh, bang for our buck. Uh, some might disagree. That's fine. That's democracy. So, uh, uh, you, know, you know, as I say, uh, for myself as one member, I'm not in a real hurry uh, to go back and and uh, 
and enter into another agreement when one comes before this body i will look at it evaluate it as i'm sure every uh, other member will and then uh, make my decision up or down based on what i believe uh, makes sense for this commission to do but right now i think our, uh, our finances are in very good shape and uh, I, I think we should just let it ride right now thank you i yield all that is duly noted. Um, is there any, anything else on policies? Okay, the next item is finance. You all have the budget report. Um, um, and I think that's, that's it for finances. Um, and on outreach, I don't have anything on outreach. Um, I don't know if... Commissioner Robillard, if you have any questions or anything else that you want to add on the outreach on this agenda. Uh, uh, just on the outreach, as you're aware, because you, you attended it, uh, we had an outreach with the uh, Committee on Health and Human Services before the City Council. Uh, Mr. Oliveira was there and gave his semi-annual update. And... Uh, <clears throat> I imagine those will continue. I'll we'll work with a, uh, 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 one of the work groups in this, uh, this commission going forward, so. Uh, okay. Um, the next item, can I go back a little? I want to go back to A, which is ADA, um, and apologize to uh, Attorney Hoyak, um, and again, not to put you on the spot or anything, but I just want to make sure that we're not overlooking anything. Is there anything that um, you feel the commission should know about regarding ADA and um, developments anyway? No, and perhaps before the next meeting, I can try to see if there are any updates uh, that are noteworthy to share with the commission. But as of this point, no, I don't have anything offhand. And that, that's not to put you on the spot, by the way. I, I hope, you know, I apologize, but I just want to make sure that we're not ignoring you either. No, uh, it, uh, thank you. Um, that's it. Okay. So, any old business? Okay, and uh, is there any new business to come before this body? Our next meeting will be Wednesday, November 13th. <laughs> will be Wednesday, November 13th, and I'm going to try to introduce, we're going to hopefully introduce you to the new Director of Veterans Services for the City of Fall River. Um, I'm laughing because my device next to me reminded me of something I was supposed to do, and I'm hoping that it didn't come over the phone system. So um, so is there any other new business to come before this commission? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Debbie Pacheco, second. All right. Roll call. Chairman Dennis Paulselli? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Debbie Pacheco? Yes. Commissioner Dan Robillard? Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.